too, and was beatified in 1989. There's more about the saints along with inspiration and Catholic resources at our website, saintoftheday.org. From Franciscan Media, this has been Saint of the Day. Hello, beloved. This is Mother Miriam. Thank you for listening to the Station of the Cross, proclaiming the fullness of truth with clarity and charity. Heard around the world on your Android and Apple mobile devices. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. You can view the live stream on Facebook at Mother Miriam Live. Now, here's Mother Miriam. Good morning, beloved. Good morning, dear family. How are you doing? I pray you're doing well. I've missed you. I was gone almost all last week. Not all of it. I think I was with you one day, but I was traveling, and then I had other situations, and I couldn't be with you. I'm so sorry. I've missed you, and I know that there are people that have wanted to call in that have not been able to, and many, many questions um, we have. So, uh, I think for this week, to make up for that, uh, we'll be ta- normally we take emails and questions uh, after the uh, half hour break, which is the second break. But I think today we'll take them and all week after the 15 minute break. Um, So that is after the first break. So I'll be thrilled to be with you and try to catch up. You're patient and wonderful. And so you will be able to call in. And with anything on your heart, the toll-free number, 1-877-511-5483, or email at mother at thestationofthecross.com. We are going to go back uh, to at least taking one or two more points in the Baltimore Catechism, because otherwise we're never going to get through this, and it's so wonderful for our faith. I know um, I had a call from uh, our friend Christine in Los Angeles who who said it's, you know, for her it's a refresher course, um, and it's it's fun to, to be rehearing the, the, um, the lessons that she memorized as a child. And wouldn't it be wonderful, dear parents... Your children should memorize this. You can order the Baltimore Catechism. Uh, Just about any bookstore will have it uh, online, um, anywhere at all. And um, I'm on volume three. For your children, you might want to get one or two. I'd have to look through them, but they're they're more simple. Um, But for us, we began on volume three, which begins with question 126, what is the end of man? And um, I think we ended last time. Let me see now. Hold on. Um, okay, we, we had... I'm just going to go back on a couple of questions. That These are very, very simple. We'll, we'll run through them. Um, what is God? God is a spirit, infinitely perfect. What do we mean when we say God is infinitely perfect? When we say God, and I'm going to remind you because I was gone almost a week, that um, if you teach this to your children, or even when we answer as adults, we should include the question with the answer because it shows that we understand the question and that the answer fits. So the answer is, um, when we say God is infinitely perfect, we mean there is no limit or bounds to his perfection, for he possesses all qualities in the highest possible degree, and he alone is infinitely perfect. Had God a beginning? God had no beginning. He always was, and he always will be. Where is God? What's the answer to that, beloved? Is there any place that God is not? Not so. God is everywhere. Nothing would exist unless um, God was there. How is God everywhere? God is everywhere, whole, W-H-O-L-E, and entire, 
as he is in any one place. This is true, and we must believe it, though we cannot understand it. Next question. If God is everywhere, why do we not see him? Now, you, you, some of you with me know we're just refreshing the last lesson. We do not see God because he's a pure spirit and cannot be seen with bodily eyes. Why do we call God a pure spirit? We call God a pure spirit because he has no body. Our soul is a spirit, but not a pure spirit because it was created for union with our body. Why can we not see God with the eyes of our body? We cannot see God with the eyes of our body because they are created to see only material things. And God is not material, but spiritual. And we gave the example last week of the wind. And John chapter 3, Jesus gives that example. It goes and blows where it will. And you know there's wind because you see its effects. You cannot see the wind, but you see the trees blowing, so you know that it's windy. Does God see us? God sees us and watches over us. Yes, 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 yes. Is it necessary for God to watch over us? What's your answer? Is it necessary for God to watch over us? Some of you are going to say, no, only when we're in trouble. No, it is necessary, beloved. It is necessary for God to watch over us, for without his constant care, we could not exist. Ask a a one-year-old. Is it necessary for your mom or a dad or sisters or brothers or someone to watch over you? No, no, I do it myself. (laughs) But no, God watches over us and not just sporadically, but all the time. Otherwise, we would not exist. A very breath, beloved, comes from God. A very ability, our ability to think, to speak, to love, everything comes from God. Does God know all things? What's the answer? Does God know all things? Don't let your child say yes. Say God knows all things. Or yes, God knows all things. And nothing is hard or impossible to him. When is a thing said to be impossible? This is a good little challenging question. When is a thing that's said to be impossible? And the answer is, that it can't begin with when, it has to begin with the question. A thing is said to be impossible when it cannot be done. Many things that are impossible for creatures are possible for God. Um, the angel Gabriel said to Mary, nothing is impossible for God. Is God just, holy, and merciful? God is all just, all holy, all merciful, as he is infinitely perfect. Why must God be just as well as merciful? You see, so many people say God is just in the Old Testament. He's a God of wrath and punishment, but he's a God of love and mercy in the New Testament. But that is as wrong as something could be wrong because it's the God of the Old Testament that so loved the world that he sent his only Son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Um, Why must God be just as well as merciful? The answer is, not because, but begin. Don't let your child begin a sentence with because. God must be just as well as merciful. They need to repeat the question and the answer. God must be just as well as merciful because he must fulfill his promise to punish those who merit punishment, who earn punishment, who deserve punishment. And because he cannot be infinite in one perfection without being infinite at all, in all. Do we earn, do we merit punishment? Yes. If you say, not me, I didn't do anything wrong. Oh, not so. We are all born into original sin, and so we have all deserved 
punishment, but we merit punishment by our, our acts. And there is no one, the psalmist wrote, absolutely no one, Paul wrote to the Romans, quoting the psalmist, no one without sin, absolutely not one. And if we're saved at all, it's because of the mercy of God. And if we're not saved, it's because we have rejected his mercy. Into what sins will the forgetfulness of God's justice lead us? That's quite a question. Into what sins will the forgetfulness of God's justice lead us? Now, God is not forgetful. But if we forget God's justice, that he punishes sins, into what sins will that lead us? And the answer, the forgetfulness of God's justice will lead us into sins of presumption. We could go ahead and sin and say, we'll get away with that, or I'll go to confession on Saturday or something like that. We don't know that we'll live till Saturday. And we commit those sins because we forget God's justice, that he could blot us out on the spot. Into what sins, well, that's this, oh, here we go. Into what sins will the forgetfulness, that's easy for you to say, forgetfulness of God's mercy lead us? And the answer, the forgetfulness of God's mercy will lead us into sins of despair. Beloved, to lose hope is to despair and that's a mortal sin because to lose hope is to deny God as long as you do not deny God you don't deny his mercy and his justice and his mercy is new his mercies are new every morning he is a faithful God faithful beloved There's the music for our first break, and as we said, we're going to take your calls, your emails, your texts right after this break. Toll free, call in 1-877-511-5483 and email at mother at thestationofthecross.com. Love learning more about the church, but confused or disheartened by the struggles we are facing today? Follow LifeSite News Catholic on Facebook, Twitter, or sign up for LifeSite Catholic emails and stay up to date on the constant stream of news about the Catholic Church. Our church is at a time of crisis, and we as laity have a responsibility and a duty to educate ourselves and stay true to the faith. LifeSite News Catholic is dedicated to keeping the laity informed and educated. To follow us, go to Facebook or Twitter and search LifeSite News Catholic. As Mother Miriam always says, we must live as if it were true. Prayer of Deliverance. Almighty God and Father, we beg thee through the intercession and help of the archangels, St. Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel, for the deliverance of our brothers and sisters who are enslaved by the evil one from anxiety, sadness, and obsessions. We implore thee, deliver us, O Lord. From hatred, fornication, and envy. We implore thee, deliver us, O Lord. From thoughts of jealousy, rage, and death. We implore thee, deliver us, O Lord. From every thought of suicide and abortion. We implore thee, deliver us, O Lord. From every form of sinful sexuality. We implore thee, deliver us, O Lord. From every division in our family and every harmful friendship. We implore thee, deliver us, O Lord. From every sort of spell, malefice, witchcraft, and every form of the occult. We implore thee, deliver us, O Lord. Thou who said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, grant that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary we may be liberated from every every demonic influence, and enjoy thy peace always. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com.
Welcome back, beloved, to Mother Miriam Live. Um, we are uh, going to take your calls and your emails and your text, and I'm going to repeat the call-in number again. It is um, 1-877-511-5483 or email at mother at thestationofthecross.com. We have a call. Let me just see for a moment here. From Michelle uh, in Pennsylvania. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Mother. How are you? Oh, I'm wonderful. Thank you, dear one. I'm glad you called. Me too. I have a moral dilemma that I'm struggling with. Yes. Um, I have a 23-year-old daughter who is gay. Mm -hmm. Um, She's living with her girlfriend now, and they're planning on getting married in 2021. Mm -hmm. They're not getting married in the Catholic Church. They're getting married. Thanks to God for that. Thanks to God, they can't get married in the Catholic Church. Good. Yes. Um, They're getting married in the hall um, by an openly gay Lutheran minister. There you go. I, I, I just, my gut instinct is not to go, but she's my, at the same time, she's my daughter. Will it cause hurt feelings? Of course. Um, Isn't that why you're calling in? Of course it'll cause hurt feelings. Don't you think so? uh, Yes, I do. And and I I feel sad. And I I want to... Part of me says, well, should I? Because she's my daughter. Mm -hmm. Will there be hurt feelings? You know, um, I won't be in the wedding. I won't have pictures of me in the... You know, with my daughter. And I won't celebrate it with her. Um, There's just so many things. I... Don't Are you Catholic, you Michelle? Yes, I am. Why did God give you your daughter? What is your vocation? To Still. be a good mother and to nurture her. To what end? Um, to tell her right from wrong. To what end? And Why do we need to know right to, from wrong? Because that's what God commands us to do. On this earth only? No, in earth and in heaven. What is a mother's vocation? To get her children to heaven, right? To teach them the right, the right from the wrong, and what's evil and what isn't. I'm not. I don't mean to say evil, but you know. Well, you can say evil. The world is filled with evil, dear one. But a mother's yeah. vocation is to get her children to heaven. To yes. raise them, you know, we've been talking about from the Baltimore Catechism, what is the end of man? In other words, for what purpose does he exist? He exists to know, love, and serve God. And that is a mother's vocation, to lead her children to know, love, and serve God. Um, your child has rejected God and rejected your teaching and is planning to get married. Now, you're concerned about attending the wedding, whether you should or not. Yes. Can If two women get married, so-called, is it a marriage? No, I don't believe it is. Right. So if you don't go, you're not missing a wedding, right? Right. Right. You're missing an abomination of uh, a so-called ceremony that only keeps them living together in sin. There's no marriage there. There's no wedding there. You don't want to be in those pictures, Michelle. There's only one thing to do is to tell your daughter the truth, to say, sweetheart, you're living in mortal sin now. If you marry this woman, number one, it's not a marriage. God does not recognize any marriage other than a man and woman together who are free to marry. <coughs> so if I don't attend, I'm not going to be absent from your wedding. Um, I'm going to be absent from your choosing to go into a very uh, immoral situation that is going to put you even further on the road to hell. That's what you need to tell your daughter. Yes, I will. I also have an older daughter who... And it's you cannot go. Situation. You cannot go. You cannot go. If you go, uh, I know I just interrupted you. If you go, you are showing your daughter that you care for her, what she thinks of you, more than you care about her soul. 
I see that makes a lot of sense. That's where, that's what my gut instinct is telling me. My well, Catholic you, core. Your Catholic core is right. What about your other daughter? She is going to. She says I don't want to not attend my sister's wedding, and I said you ought to consult the Catholic Catechism about that. And she keeps saying she doesn't want to miss it. I love her. She's my sister. I don't want her to be led into something bad either. You why know, don't, don't you take her, her? Why don't you say to her what I just said to you? I will say if you love your sister, how can you support her on her way to hell? It's not a wedding. You're not going to miss your sister's wedding because it's not a wedding. It's an evil, immoral celebration, and it's debauchery. And in the Old Testament, people would have been killed for that. And God has not changed. And the scriptures say that neither um, murderers or homosexuals or uh, others will enter the kingdom of heaven. And so to attend that, you're you're celebrating her being on the road to hell. That's not love. That's emotion, but it's not love. Love does what's best for the beloved. So I would the tell your daughter. She's a very devout girl, and um, I who's don't a want devout to girl? Go on that road. Your other daughter? My oldest one, yes. The um, oldest it's one. A mystic, it's a mixed-up situation. I'm well, married. Well, that's okay. Protestant. You, oh, so I married your husband's a Protestant. Protestant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, uh, we couldn't agree. We ended up going to the Lutheran church. I did it just to please him, but I ended up resenting it. I did get married in the Catholic church because I, I. I mm-hmm. definitely put my foot down. And Were your girls just, raised you Catholic? You know what? I can't do this. Pardon? Were your girls raised Catholic? No, Lutheran. There you go. But- there you go. All right. So it's it right from the beginning. You know, when we're unequally yoked, we don't marry a Catholic spouse, and the children are raised Catholic. You're looking at the fruit of that. You're looking at the fruit of that. So I don't say it's all your fault, but it it's is. Cer- it well. It, it's a combination of things, but um, it's time for you to stop supporting their road to hell and truly love them with God's love. I have re- many regrets for doing what I did. Well, that's all right. I, you, you, I finally you, told my husband, I said, no, I just can't do this. I'm really just doing it to please you. Because he was originally Methodist, and I said, you know, no, there's no way I'm going to be Methodist. So we did the thing in between, but then I just ended up saying, I, I can't do this anymore. I'm going right. back to what I was. And he's fine now. He's perfectly fine with that. Well, you, and my oldest daughter did become Catholic. I was a cradle Catholic from the beginning, and she's really happy now being Catholic. And she's the one that wants to go to her sister's wedding. Yes. And, and you tell her that um, there's no love in that. She wants to go because she says she loves her sister, but there's no love when you support someone uh, in a completely immoral act that will send them to hell unless they repent. That's the answer, Michelle, and you need to Thank say you. it to your daughter and your husband as as calmly uh, as you can. All right. Thank you so much, God, Mother. God bless you, Michelle. God bless you, too. Thank you. Thank you. We have a text from someone who writes in anonymously and says, Hello, Mother, please help me respond to the question. Where is God during very difficult times? Why does God not intervene? Thank you, and God bless you, Anonymous. God is on his throne, beloved. He is exactly where he was now uh, when his son was on the cross uh, through very difficult times. God is just now where he was when his son was on the cross. God is with us always. He never leaves or forsakes us. If we leave him, if if we think God is not around because he's allowing these difficulties, he doesn't save us from them, um, he's not the cause of those difficulties, and he wants to teach us through a lesson that may be difficult. Not, uh, uh, Paul wrote to the Corinthians, that no temptation or trial has overtaken you. Um, uh, That God is not allowed, but God is faithful. And he will, with the temptation, provide the way of escape. But God's 
way of escape is not out of a situation. It's through a situation that we could learn and be transformed and be saved from worse situations in the future. God is there. He, we may have the sense that he's left us because he doesn't um, obey us or or cater to our every whim, but God is not a genie. He's the God who loved us, who loves us still, who made us for himself, and who will do what it takes to get us to heaven. But he gives us free will to respond. We have an email from Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen says, Hello, Mother. In speaking of souls, what happens to the souls of miscarried and aborted babies, atheist souls, and non-Christian souls? Thank you, and God bless your ministry, Mary Ellen. Those are two different questions. To atheist and non-Christian souls, um, uh, the Catechism says that... um, Uh, those who through no fault of their own, and only God knows what is no fault of a a person, those who through no fault of their own do not know the Catholic Church, um, but have lived up to the grace that God has given them, not that they will be saved, but they can be saved. And so to the atheist and non-Christian, both of them have the grace of God, including the atheist. The heavens declare the glory of God. The atheist wouldn't believe, not believe, uh, breathe, I should say, if it weren't for the grace of God. And so um, uh, to the atheist and non-Christian souls, um, if they live up to the grace God has given them, they can be saved. Same thing with Catholics, dear one. If Catholics live up to the grace that we've been given, which is much more than anyone on the face of the earth, we can be saved. There's no guarantee. The only guarantee is if we don't turn from God or if we turn back to him with repentance. Miscarried and aborted babies is a different situation. They don't have the ability to reason. And um, we don't, the church teaching doesn't give us a definitive answer on that. It does say that God is willing that none perish, the scriptures. But um, we don't know uh, where un, the issue is baptism. Uh, baptism is necessary for salvation. Yet St. Augustine said, um, uh, God is greater and uh, not bound by his sacraments. So it's, it's, we don't know what happens. We only know that the God of the whole earth will do what is right, and we don't need to despair. We can be sure if our hearts are so um, um, concerned for those children, God's heart is no less concerned, but we do not have the answer to that, beloved. There's the music for our second break, and we'll come back and take your calls, your emails, your texts, um, 877-877-511-5483. We'll be right back, beloved. LifeSite News is an international news agency devoted to defending life and family and restoring Christian culture. We aim to educate and activate our readers with the information they need to fight the most crucial battles of our day in their churches, workplaces, and families. Our motto is Caritas in Veritate, love in truth. We firmly believe that promoting the truth is an act of love, however hard it is to hear. Over the last 20 years, we have built a reputation for uncompromising reporting, no matter the cost. LifeSite News is by far the most popular pro-life website on the internet with over 40 million unique users every year and growing. Check us out at LifeSiteNews.com. Hello, beloved. This is Mother Miriam. Many of you are familiar with Mother Miriam Live, but I wonder if you have listened to some of the other programs from the Station of the Cross, such as The Catholic Current. Father Robert McTagg discusses important topics in the church and in the world each weekday at 5 p.m. Eastern. You can listen anytime to The Catholic Current as a podcast on the iCatholic Radio mobile app. 
uh, started drinking beer on Saturday nights, uh, sleeping in on Sunday mornings, missing mass, and then it just became a pattern and continued. Without God, I don't know where I'd be right now. I feel like I'm whole again. I know the importance of the Eucharist. I know the importance of the sacraments that I didn't know at a young age. I follow God's will because my desire is to get to heaven. Our, our lives are rich and full by being members of the church. If you've been away from the Catholic Church, visit catholicscomehome.org. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. Welcome back, beloved, to Mother Miriam Live. I am thrilled to be with you. And we have um, Josie on the phone. Hi, Josie. Hi, Mother Miriam. How are you doing? I'm terrific. And yourself? Not too bad. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, sweetie. I do have a question for you, Mother. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, are you aware of any clergy that is standing up against Biden? Because you know Biden, he practices Catholic. Are you aware of any clergy um, that is standing up against his Biden's beliefs? Okay, now why do you ask the question? Um, I just, um, I guess I just wanted to know if... Um, I don't even know. I just wanted to know if there was any Catholic clergy standing up and letting the Catholic community know what Biden believes in, Well, which are not like, they're not really Catholic beliefs. Right, they're not. Um, they're not. And uh, no, I understand your question, but okay. the answer is this. Mm -hmm. um, there are some... Catholic priests that stand up for matters of life more than other Catholic priests. I wish every single one would. Um, normally, if it's a non-profit uh, uh, organization, you cannot um, become involved in the political arena by name or you lose a tax-exempt status. Now... I gotcha. You can do it in other ways. That doesn't mean that they're cowards. Um, mm -hmm. Catholic Answers has produced a wonderful booklet uh, for serious Catholics, and it's titled The Five Non-Negotiables. And that is to say that no Catholic can vote for one of those non-negotiables without entering into serious sin. One of them is abortion, same-cell cell research, <clears throat> Euthanasia, um, uh, help me here, two more, uh, contraception, I'm not sure if contraception is in them, but that's a mortal sin, um, I, I'm, I'm, you have to go to Catholic Answers to get those five non-negotiables, I have the booklet, but not at hand, mm -hmm. so all those, those are absolutes, those are moral absolutes, and if someone does not believe those moral absolutes and calls themselves Catholic, they are not Catholic. They are deceiving themselves and the public, and no one should vote for them. Beautifully put, Mother, and I okay. appreciate you. Oh, Thank here, you. someone just helped me. Um, abortion, yeah. a hu uh, four, five non-negotiables. Thank you so much. Abortion, <coughs> human cloning... Euthanasia, which is assisted suicide, stem cell research, embryonic stem cell research, and homosexual so-called marriage. Thank you, Mother. I really okay. appreciate that. All right. God bless you, God dear bless one. you, and you, thank you, you again for your uh, courage. Thank you, Josie. God bless you. We have a call from Paul in Massachusetts. Hello, my Paul. Hi. Hi, Hi sweetheart. I can hear you just oh. fine. Okay, I just wanted to, I think you said last week or whenever you were on the air, I was listening to I listen to you every day, thank you. 
for what you do. Thank and, you, Paul. Um, there was, I thought you said something about a person. Paul, 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 yes. it's very hard to hear you. Sounds like you're walking all over the place and doing things. I don't know what you're doing, but we have too much noise coming through, and I'm not hearing you well. Okay, Can you hold on a second. And maybe turn off your speakerphone. I'm trying to get to a quiet spot. Okay. How's that? that That's better? better. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry about that. That's uh, all right. Yeah, I think it, we're talking about how, like, with this COVID-19, uh, COVID, whatever it's called, the coronavirus, and how the, the on, I think it was the last time... We shut down all the masses in Massachusetts on, uh, mm -hmm. I think, Friday the 13th. It was uh, in March. It was going to daily mass. And, uh, you know, the priest said, you can't receive communion uh, in, on your tongue. Right. And, and then the next day, there was no masses at all. And there hasn't okay. been no daily mm -hmm. masses since then. Mm -hmm. and, and then Sunday masses, they, uh, they started to bring back slowly. But they still don't have, you know, as many messages as they had, and they have all these restrictions, which you know about. Yeah. The reason why I'm calling is because I thought you said that the diocesan bishop doesn't have a right to, to uh, give people dispensations for not going to Sunday Mass. Is that That's correct. Okay, That's correct. Somebody... That's what Cardinal Raymond Burke, one of the top canonists of the Church, has said. Sunday Mass, the requirement for Sunday Mass is a divine law. It is not man-made. It's not the magisterium that made that up. It's from God. It's a divine law, and no no one, no bishop, no priest, has the right to dispense people from a divine law. Okay, I, I agree with that, and I, that's what I thought you said. I wanted to make sure you said it, because I'm, I was having a conversation with somebody that said, no, you're wrong, they absolutely have the right. And then somebody else came in on the post and well, gave just just ask people to support their answers. Canon eighty seven one. What does quoted. it say? What does it, it says say? The diocesan bishop, whenever he judges that it contributes to, whenever he judges that it contributes to spiritual good, is able to dispense the faithful from universal and particular disciplinary laws issued for his territory or his subjects by the supreme authority of the church. But that does not include divine law. Right, I agree. I'm just, you no, know. but yeah, I'm with you. It does not include okay. what God has said. Because when I quote that Mother Miriam said this, I wanted to, you know, because I only heard it in the radio. Well, you I quote that you. Mother Miriam quoted Cardinal Raymond Burke. Okay. All right. All right, Paul. Yeah. God bless you, my dear one. Thank All you. All right. You're welcome, sweetheart. We have an email from Jolene who says, please give me your biblical answer to this. Man, 30 years. Woman, 28 years. Both Catholic. Lived together for about a year and then recently got married. What is their culpability at this point for that earlier sin of living together without being married? Well, to begin with, if they were married in the Catholic Church, they would have gone to confession before they got married, and they would have confessed that and because it's mortal sin and be absolved in order to be married. So if that took place, then they don't have culpability for it. They've been forgiven. If it did not take place, their culpability is high um, because that's a mortal sin that has not been forgiven, and if they're Catholic and they're going to church and receiving the Eucharist, they're committing mortal sin on mortal sin. And so the biblical answer is this, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. John 1, 9, if we confess our sins and for mortal sin, we must go to a priest. We have an email from Summer. Summer writes, good morning, Mother Miriam. Thank you for your advice last week regarding getting help with my postpartum depression and help with my babies. I have a new question today. My niece has been identifying as a boy for a few years now. My family was not sure how to handle it. So after the initial shock, 
some words exchanged, etc. We mostly just took it as a phase and hoped it would blow over soon. Well, that's a very serious direction to take. Just take it as a phase because you're allowing someone to live in disorder and potential mortal sin uh, f- how, for a few years, for a month, what, what, what's the length of a phase? It can't even be an hour. That's not, a, that's not love. That's not a good way to deal with that. She said, my first question, my opinion, my sister misunderstood this as full support. Well, I could understand that she might. My niece is now 19 years old and officially has a date for gender reversal surgery. It is happening in less than a month. I want to say shame on that family that took it as a phase. This is extremely serious. I have never been open with her or my sister about condemning this. What is my role here exactly? Well, to be open with them about not you're not condemning it. God is condemning it. What should I do or say? My sister is extremely sensitive and has said before that if anyone does not support this, then they are not worth having in her life. I know that I answer only to God, not my sister. So I think I might be ready to have the courage to say something. Is it a sin for me to not do so? It is a sin for me to not do so, correct? Correct. Yes. Yes, Summer. You must say something. Um, please advise Mother Miriam. Please pray for my fairy family. Thank you, Summer. If you say nothing, it will be the sin of um, omission. And it's too serious. Uh, when we do not say something, in a sense, we participate in that sin. And it's very serious. Um, in your situation, since your sister has said that whoever doesn't support it is not worth having in her life, I would not speak to her because you haven't all this time, which is, I think you should also confess, um, but I think you should write her a very careful letter because if you begin to speak with her, she won't allow you to give her a good answer. She'll cut you off. I would say write a very, very careful letter. Use the catechism. Use God's words in Scripture. Um, look up uh, a good uh, pro-life sites about homosexuality, about gender identity, and all of that. And uh, give her an article, a good article with it. Not just an article, but an article that you've read and thought would be uh, your sister could relate to. And write a full letter and tell her how much you love her. And the fact is that you would not love her at all if you participated through your silence in allowing her daughter to do this um, this act of debauchery to her body and to sin in so to sin so uh, before God. Okay, um, we have a text from somebody who writes in anonymously, and the question is: Do do you reject Vatican II? Um, I don't even know how to deal with that question. Do you reject Vatican II? Uh, You mean wholesale? Do I deny that it ever happened? Do I reject its teachings, good and bad? Uh, The answer is no. The answer is no. Um, What is not good, we cannot accept. What is good, we do accept. It was not a doctrinal council, but a pastoral one and many things that were done that were harmful to the church. But there's also many things that were done that were good. And in fact, Archbishop Vigano and um, Bishop Athanasius Snyder have been having that exact exchange on Vatican II. Um, Not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. What is good and what uh, is is, uh, troublesome or even in error. So you might take a look at LifeSite News and look up those uh, dialogues, and that may help you. There's the music for our break, beloved. It's our last break. We'll have 10 minutes when we come back. Our lines are wide open, and you are absolutely welcome to call in with anything whatsoever on your heart. Um, toll free, one 877 5115483 or email at mother at the station of the cross dot com. We'll be right back.
We stand at a crossroads in history. We can stand up for life, family, and a Christian culture, or we can stand idly by while the fabric of society becomes fundamentally anti-life, anti-family, and anti-Christian, slowly leading to its own demise. LifeSite News is the leading defender of life, family, and Christian culture. Through our news reporting, we seek to educate readers with information and zeal. They need to fight the most crucial battles of our day, and we need your help to continue that mission. You can support LifeSite News by following our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Another way to support LifeSite is to prayerfully consider becoming a Sustained Life monthly donor to help us continue to save lives in the culture. To donate, visit give.lifesitenews.com forward slash sustained life. Our staff of over 40 and millions of future generations, thank you for helping to save the culture. Join us here on the Station of the Cross for the Liturgy of the Hours at 5 a.m., 3 p.m., and 9.30 p.m. Eastern with the Office of Readings read at 3 o'clock. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 18, verse 20, Jesus tells us, Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Liturgy of the Hours is also known as the Divine Office and is the daily prayer of the Church. So you know you'll be uniting your prayer with priests, religious, and laity throughout the world. It's comprised of small reflections, readings from sacred scripture, and writings from saints and theologians. To learn more about the Liturgy of the Hours, visit thestationofthecross.com. That's thestationofthecross.com. Pray with us each day at 5 a.m., 3 p.m., and 9.30 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network. Welcome to Mother Miriam Live on the Station of the Cross Catholic Radio Network with live video streaming brought to you by LifeSite News and the Station of the Cross. Call Mother with your questions at 1-877-511-5483 or email her at mother at thestationofthecross.com. Welcome back, beloved, to Mother Miriam Live. This is our last segment together, and we've got a good 10 minutes, um, as opposed to a bad 10 minutes. <laughs> we have a good amount of time. Our lines are wide open. If you'd like to call in toll-free, 877 511 or email at mother at thestationofthecross.com. We have an email from Evelyn who writes, I enjoy listening to you in Australia. I love hearing from people in Australia and all over the world. It's so wonderful. It makes us a real family. Thank you for your wonderful program. Thank you, Evelyn. She says, I'm beginning spiritual direction, Ignatian. Very good. What is your advice for those who are working with a good spiritual director about how to be sensitive to God's movements and voice in daily life and through his word. Now, that's a confusing sentence because your good spiritual director should answer that for you. Um, For those who are working with a good spiritual director about how to be sensitive to God's movements and voice in daily life and through his word, I'd say, ask your good spiritual director that question. Um, You know, if we want God's will, if we want to love him, Uh, Apostle Paul says to pray always. That is to be God-word always. Uh, G-O-D-W-A-R-D, God-word always. Um, And just, uh, Lord, will this always think about him. Be sensitive, whatever you wish to do. Uh, Lord, is this what you would have? And uh, uh, have a heart to want to give him honor as you read his word, as you go about your your chores and duties and pleasures in life and all things. Uh, if your desire is to give him honor and your heart is toward heaven, God will lead you. Um, Evelyn writes, after a long career in one field of work, how can I better discern how God now wants me to use my gifts to help others in the world and the church? especially in this time of crisis and lockdown. St. Francis Sales have a, has a wonderful little pocketbook, real small, and it's called How to Know God's Will. It's very good. He has seven points in there for you to know. But um, St. Augustine said the way we know God's will is to love him and then do what we will. 
Love, that's the key to all of life. Love God and do what you will. Not what you want, but what you will. Because your will includes your reason and the gifts God has given you. And if you love to do something, if you love to take care of the poor, and you say, but but the schools need help, do what your heart loves. Do what your heart loves. Um, unless God has specifically shown you a uh, direction that you hadn't thought about. Do what your heart loves, because that's what God has given you. The, the psalmist wrote, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. He'll put them in there, and then he'll work them out. Evelyn says, do you agree that lay people must do more to evangelize? Absolutely. And if so, how should we best do this, especially now? The best way always to evangelize is to do what I often say, and John Henry Weston often repeats, live as if it's true. Live as if it's true in everything you do, in everything you say, in everything you don't do, and in everything you don't say. There's no better way to evangelize than an example of someone who loves God 24-7 and uh, chooses all her paths through him. And then, of course, you can't keep silence silent in the face of those who don't know God. She says, what are your tips for how to strongly combat the spirit of desolation during this pandemic? It's a simple fact. We combat desolation by knowing it's not of God, it's of Satan. If we give in to de- desolation, we are giving in to serve Satan. That's it. And we need to snap out of that. That's the only way to do it. Snap out of it, desolation. It's from, it from, it's from Satan. If you had God and Satan standing before you, and God said, trust, and Satan said to you, there's no hope, you have a choice of who to believe. You have a choice. No, don't let your feelings guide you, because those feelings are not of God. They are not of God. They're of Satan and or your flesh, but they're not of God. And what helps me is I don't have to know where things come from, Satan or, or any place else. I just know if it's not of God, I don't want it. That's it, and I reject it. Um, many questions, but thank you for responding to what you can. Well, I hope, dear Evelyn, that those answers have helped some. Read the scriptures. Read the scriptures. There, there's nothing more encouraging you could read. Read the scriptures. Read the gospels. Um, read Ephesians. Read Colossians. It's the word they talk about, a worthy walk. Um, and uh, James, who says, no temptation has overtaken you. Uh, oh, I quoted that earlier. That's what Paul said, um, that is not common to man. Um, but James says, consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect work that you may be perfectly complete, lacking in nothing. This pandemic is, I'm simply going to say to you, it's demonic. And don't give in in any way, not to discouragement, not to fear. Those are the devil's tools. They are not God's tools. We have an email from Cheryl who says, I joined the Catholic Church around four years ago. Great, Cheryl. I have a friend that is really pushing me for biblical chapter and verse to prove the Immaculate Conception and that she is the mother of God. Also, where in the Bible it says that Jesus is God? Any help you can give me would be greatly appreciated. With COVID-19 rearing its ugly head, I am staying home as I am 71 and have diabetes. Thanks for your help, Cheryl. Cheryl, if you hold one bit. Excuse me, I needed to yawn. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to suggest two things to you for your um, a biblical friend. Number one, get a book by Carl Keating called Fundamentalism and Catholicism. Fundamentalism and Catholicism. Ga- Carl fights every major attack on the Catholic Church, difference between Catholics and Protestants, with Scripture. It's outstanding. Fundamentalism and Catholicism. 
Secondly, get a, a tape set by Tim Staples called Behold Your Mother. Uh, Tim goes through every subject about Mary, and it's also outstanding. Tim is with Catholic Answers as well. You can get both the book and the and the tape set or CD set on at Catholic Answers. Catholic.com, go to their shop. Um, you said you have a friend that is really pushing me for biblical chapter and verse to prove the immaculate conception um, and that she is... Mary is the mother of God. Okay. On the mother of God, just go to the beginning of the Gospel of Luke, the Magnificat, where Mary um, was with child by the Holy Spirit, and she came to her cousin Elizabeth, who was with child, and Elizabeth, the child in Elizabeth's womb, leapt, and Elizabeth said to Mary, how is it that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Her Lord is God and marries his mother. Um, Where does it say that Jesus is God? Um, uh, Jesus often used the covenant name of God, I am. And that's why the Jews picked up stones to stone him, because in saying I am, he was declaring himself to be God, as Jesus did. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection life. I am the door of the sheep. All of that. Um... And as far as the Immaculate Conception, um, I can give you verses in the Old Testament, particularly Proverbs, I was going to say Proverbs 8, but there's others that um, uh, can give you indirect reference. But um, uh, you'd have to go to church teaching for the Immaculate Conception, uh, and they will explain it. In the letter to the Romans, St. Paul says, Faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes by the preaching of Christ. Hear Christ preached on the station of the cross by calling 1-605-562-0287. Podcasts of our network-produced shows are free for your listening pleasure at thestationofthecross.com and on our free iCatholic Radio app for Android and Apple mobile devices. Be uplifted in your faith and inspired to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Listen today at thestationofthecross.com or on our iCatholic Radio mobile app. Catholic Radio Mobile app is two apps in one. Your place to hear great Catholic programs and music. Here's what listeners are saying about the updated iCatholic Radio Mobile.